I was born in Rwanda. Uh, we left in 94, so I was six years old, uh, about a month before the genocide kicked off. I feel like I started writing when I was seven or eight. My mom always makes a joke that I swallowed a dictionary because I used to read it all the time like a book. As an introvert, uh, overthinking is my home address. I, I park up there and when I write, it takes me out of my head. It, I can articulate things that I might not be able to articulate in a conversation because I can sit and just have a free flow of what's in my head and then edit that. So I like to think I'm a sculpture with words. Sometimes when I've written something huge or amazing or just something I needed to release, I sleep better. Um, it's definitely great for my mental health to be able to just write all the time. And for me, writing is like breathing and what it's led to has just been crazy. So I've had the amazing opportunities to write for the Huffington Post, the Independent. Um, I've done different broadcasts with the BBC, Al Jazeera, Channel 4, and it's just been amazing. But fundamentally for me, journalism is about showing somebody what's happening that they wouldn't normally have access to, they wouldn't normally understand, they wouldn't normally see, and bringing forward um, attention or putting a spotlight on injustices happening in the world to make sure it doesn't happen again. That may stem from the fact that what happened in Rwanda could have been avoided if the world got involved, but they didn't. In these last few months, especially the last probably seven weeks, it's been really intense. This isn't the first time we've heard somebody say, I can't breathe before they died. So George Floyd was just a powder keg on top of everything else that had been going on up until that point. So I think it's been freeing, but also a huge period of grieving. So I have just been crying and I'm not usually a crier. So I've cried at anything and everything um, for a while. I've stopped crying and I think that's because I was writing. It's because it all came out of me. And from that, I've been able to speak at two Black Lives Matter rallies and been able to help people realize that there's still a long way to go, that there's still changes to be made and that we can actually be part of that change, that we don't have to just consign it to the history books or to the Martin Luther Kings or to the Malcolm X's, that we can also be part of that change. I'm just hoping for the change that we're all trying to fight for at the moment so that I'm not having to tell my kids it's just the way it is, this is what you need to do to adapt, to survive, that I can actually tell them, no, in my lifetime, this is what we were able to change and this is what you will never have to experience again. The written word for me is an opportunity to bridge a gap across race, culture, um, opinions, and to try and find common ground, and to try and find that connection point, to try and see or take a walk in somebody else's shoes, even if it's just for a page or two.